Hey okay, everybody, we're here today having a chat with uh, the wonderful Kerry Spina. I'm uh, fortunate to have known Kerry for almost 12 years now. Uh, when my daughter was born uh, was when we first met Kerry with the, her fabulous Kids in Harmony program. Uh, g'day Kerry and welcome. Thank, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. All right, so Kerry, can you just give us a little bit of a background on yourself before we jump into some uh, directed questioning? Okay. Um, well, I'm a wellbeing educator and a um, author. Yay, that's why I'm here. And also a behaviour support coach. So support parents and educators in um, guiding children's behaviours to bring out the best in everyone, not just children. Yeah. And I have Kids in Harmony, which is a wellbeing program uh, in Townsville, North Queensland, Australia, which is always <laughs> wonderful. And they're in-person classes for for their child, child uh, parent participated classes and um, or caregiver participated classes, and focused on well-being and music as the pathway and relaxation and mindset and all those wonderful things that our children need to um to thrive in the world. Yeah, it's a wonderful program. My kids both loved it, so that was awesome. Thank you. Okay, so uh, one of the, the biggest questions um, new writers uh, come across, especially when I'm doing author talks, I get it all the time, is where do you come up with your ideas? So from a picture book author yourself, where would you come up with your ideas? Well, my first... See? So um, I, I wanted some values and virtues cards but I didn't, I wanted them non-denominational non because I found that there was a little bit of resistance if they had, um, if they had a religious connotation. So some people sort of balked at them or weren't quite comfortable with them if they had some form of re religious connotation. And most of the, most of the um, virtues cards out there were like that. Yeah. So I and of course they come from religious texts. They do come from philosophers too. So um, what I wanted to do was create a universal set of um, cards, and I, and then that from that the book to um, to have that to fill a need, a gap that I could see that people could pick up the cards or or pick up the book and read the words and not feel that it was um, attached to anything or any agenda. Yeah. Um, or, or you know that non-denominational, just making it making it for everyone, not just one particular particular place. So that was that was how I got that that idea. Um, generally, I find a gap. So any of the writing I've done, I've found a gap, and I've written about it. Um, my other one, though, my I love my body book came from a song. Okay. So I think um, as an author or as a creative. We can look at what we've already got and turn things into books. Yeah. Um, we don't have to to recreate the wheel or to fill a gap, or we can actually use what we've got and make something from it. Yeah, that's funny because um, you reference a song because part of my um, instructional course for writing picture books is I um, make a correlation between writing a picture book, the rhythm and the beat and the cadence, to being very much like writing a song. So. Um, oh. Absolutely. I feel the same way about it too. But yeah, it um, the I Love My Body book was a song first and then put into book. Yeah. So uh, the next question I have is usually around the, um, as a regional author, um, what are your biggest challenges? Now, I know coming from an educator background, you have uh, probably a lot more uh, skill set in terms of, of bringing a message to people whether it's through the picture book or other avenues. But being in the regions, you would still experience challenges and difficulties in doing that, yes? Uh, look, I am a, I'm, my skill in writing is a learned skill. It, I never had, I was, I, it's, a, it's a skill I've actually developed through practice. Yeah. Through support. So through my editors and through knowing who to get help from and through having editors, I've learned how to write. Because during that time, they sort of coach you and you learn ways of how to write. Um, I, I write how I speak in, in blogs and things. So um, we, we get our own style. Um, 
so yeah, just to, to let you know that that my writing is actually I'm a I think I'm a I'm an okay writer. <laughs> it's a strength of mine. It energizes me. I love to write, but it is also something that's taken years. I I used to have the worst grammar, the worst punctuation. I still do. I still cringe and put stuff out with with um with that sort of, not not published stuff, but um. <laughs> Uh, it, it's a learned skill. So anyone out there listening, it's something if you love it and it energizes you, just keep going because it's more practice. You get better at it. You learn as you go. Yeah, I think that's an important message too. That it is a learned skill. Nobody is perfect at it to start with. And yeah. um, I, I suppose one of the things I found being regional, um, not being able to attend certain things like conferences and um, pitching sessions and that sort of stuff without forking out a lot of money. Um, now the being willing to do it online and being willing to trust in the system and let it go, you let your information out there and, and get critiqued and get the feedback back. So that's oh, one of the difficulties. I think too regionally, um, like I love what you're doing, trying to have that beautiful collective and knowing and gathering all those diverse support people that help with publishing a book because it's not just the writing that's just one that's that's the idea is and the writing is a little bit of part of it um so i think regionally the challenges are just finding you support people and that that person you can sit down with and say what does this look like big picture what you know i've um we've shared i've had people ring me and go how'd you do it and you know, you'd start to, there's a process, I suppose. So yeah. I, I found that um, for me, I didn't have anyone. So I was doing learning as I went and just asking people and being brave enough to email or then they'd suggest someone and then that person and this person and you just, I just kept burrowing away, yeah, at um, learning. I, I fumbled along as I went. Yeah. yeah, that's funny because I actually stumbled into it as well because when I first started this back in 2016, um, uh, there was a summer writers festival, no, a winter writers festival, whatever it was here in Townsville, and I wanted to get in with um, Alex Adset, who was an editor, and I didn't get the chance. I missed paying for it. So I sat out there for four hours drawing pictures just on the waiting list to try and get in, and they, they let me go in and pitch. But in that in that period of time while I was waiting, I met all these other authors who were trying to get in to see her and they had already booked in and that sort of stuff. And from that, everyone going, oh, I didn't know that there was another children's book author. I didn't know there was another picture book author. So yeah. we created a kids lit group that oh. is still going to this day that we, we get to meet on a monthly basis. So, And that's something that um, other regional uh, people should think about as well, you know, looking, for, like you said, for like-minded people. If there's groups, if there isn't a group, create a group, put it out there and let people know and, and just have that community where you can actually talk to each other. It can be virtual or physical. It doesn't really matter either way. You just need to have that community that you feel safe in to discuss your ideas and get constructive feedback. Absolutely, because I think, um, it's really easy to get blocked. It's really easy to have a book sit there for seven years. It's so easy for time to fly. Um, so, yeah, if you, you know, I think, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll move on to another question. Um, I'm an author illustrator, so uh, a lot of the times I don't have to worry about this, but as, a, as an author, how do you go about getting illustrations for your book? Okay. So my first book I got my the little book of harmony I got illustrated locally by a town school illustrator awesome yeah was it is awesome and they're just stunning uh Fiona Alonji and she is a graphic designer illustrator so she had that um two sides to that professional uh expertise so she could not only do the illustrations but she could also page layout because there's they're two separate expertise definitely Um, so that was a blessing um the the cards took like nearly seven years to do the cards it was (laughs) so long but um and then when I got the uh little book of harmony same same um I've got the same illustrations from Fiona and then I got um a lady that I knew down south to do the page layout to try and bring a different feel to it and the different colors to it Yep. Um, and I've known her for years too uh, in Victoria. Um, she did a great job too. So just 
So um, you're relying on your networks then. So yeah, you, my you've, networks. But yeah. the, the I Love My Body book took longer. It took me about two years to find an illustrator. I got a lot of um, quotes and it, and I, I often felt like I, I was hoping it didn't look like I was wasting people's <laughs> time because my I because it's a song and it's very basic it's like I love my head I love my nose like it's rhymes and things but it's it's a very basic um self-love and body awareness book from a um literature like from a from a English perspective I suppose or how you write but so the illustrations actually had to tell the story yeah so they were it was really important they, well, they became the illustrations are always important, but they became more important when they actually had to be the storyteller. Yeah, very good. The, All right, the illustration brings it to life. Yeah, whereas, whereas uh, this was the reverse, the illustrations were the storyteller, and the it was the reverse. I felt for this sometimes illustrations play a different role, yeah, the spotlight, or they are the spotlight. Yeah, definitely. I'm not okay. sure if you agree, but that's no, how no, I well, feel well, this because they, they really were the storyteller. The, the, the whole book is amazing because of the illustrator, whereas the Little Book of Harmony, they the words and the illustrations equally support each other. Yeah, yeah. so the, in my course I talk about the three types of illustrations in a picture book. There's your symmetry, which um, is for the younger reader where the text and the image are exactly the same. So the image uh, reinforces what the text is saying. And then you have the complementary one where the illustration adds more context um, and more story to what's written on the page. And then you have the contradictory one, which is hilarious. Um, and if it's done well, whereas the text says one thing and the illustration says something completely different, but it still tells the one story. So uh, what you're saying is going on. I didn't know that because I'm not into, this isn't my jam. I just know that because of the simplicity of the words, the illustrations had to be the storyteller. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. So, so it years to find that illustration. <laughs> what what advice can you give someone starting out as an author for kids? Just do it. Just just trust yourself in small steps. You don't have to invest a lot of money to start. You don't just live your dream. Even if you even if you um, invest in a certain amount and you go to office works and print it out and you've got your book, just follow through from the beginning to the end and get and finish it. That that's my thing. I think so many people say I've written a book, but it's it, or I've written a story and and let's bring these stories to life. Let's share these stories. That, that it's not about perfection. It's not about whether you've got what whoever you. Oh, you pause there. Just do what you can with what you've got. Be resourceful to start if you if you need to be. I had to be. I, that's why it took seven years for kids for the for the cards and the book. It wasn't that I was slow or it took that long. It was just that I needed the resources financially to pay for it because yeah. it, it it costs money to do it. But it doesn't have to. I've I've learned over the time you don't. I, it doesn't have to. Um, yeah. you, can, you can do it resourcefully. and To create the ex the initial story will cost you nothing really but time. Oh, so create the initial oh. story and yeah. then get some constructive feedback on it and then maybe learn how to put a submission kit together and pitch it to a, a, an editor or yeah. a publishing house or something like that, yeah. Yeah, or, and even a local, put a thing out on Facebook for a local illustrator, someone close that you can sit opposite with and, and become a team and enjoy the ride together. It doesn't, you know, I think that's what we forget locally too, that we, yeah. can, we can just see what it take, what ride it takes you on because it takes you on a ride. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, we're all about trying to develop local talent and regional artists, so yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah, and, and get, their, get their ideas and get their feedback. Or they might say, hey, I love what you've written. I'm not the illustrator for you, but I know someone I think these that could illustrate this book magically. Yeah. So, you know, it's not always a great fit either, which, you know, you, you know straight away if it's going to work or not. 
Okay, then. So in closing, is there anything else you want to have a little bit of a chat about? Have you got any new projects coming up or new books? No. No, not really. No? I have little little things every now and again. Um, yeah, no, not really. Okay. Well, we can just wait and hope that you get another book done, hey? You are lovely, Matt. That's so kind to say that. All right, then. Well, thank you so much for spending your time and having a chat with us. I'm sure the emerging writers are going to really appreciate your insights. So once again, thank you very much, Kerry. Thank you. Bye. Bye.